हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स डीजे गणित इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन मोर एग्जांपल ऑन कोशिश रेसिड्यू थियरम इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर नंबर फाइव वी हैव डिस्कस्ड व्हाट इज कोशिश रेसिड्यू थियरम एंड वी हैव एक्सप्लेन वन प्रॉब्लम ऑन कोशिश रेसिड्यू थियरम सो इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन लेक्चर नंबर फाइव आई सजेस्ट यू टू वॉच लेक्चर नंबर फाइव ऑन रेसिड्यूज बिफोर गोइंग फॉर दिस लेक्चर now here uh, before doing this problem we just recall the statement of cauchy's residue theorem so cauchy's residue theorem says that suppose we have a function f of z which is analytic at all points inside and on the simple closed contour c except for a finite number of points denoted by z1 z2 up to zn then integral of f of z along this simple closed contour c is given by 2 pi i times sum of residues of f of z at all these points z1 z2 up to zn so before going for uh, that application of cauchy's residue theorem uh, we just recall that how to find out residue of f of z at isolated singular point say z0 so suppose z0 is an isolated singular point of f of z then this z0 is a pole of order m z0 is a pole of order m of function f of z if f of z can be written as phi of z over z minus z zero to the power m, where this phi of z is analytic at point z zero, and also value of function phi at point z zero is not equal to zero. Z zero is a pole of order m of function f of z. If we can write f of z in this form, f of z equal to phi of z over z minus z0 to the power m where phi of z is required to be analytic at z0 and value of phi at z0 must be non zero and this m is natural number then z0 is called pole of order m of f of z and in this case residue of f of z at z equal to z0 is given by value of m minus 1th derivative of this function phi at z0 divided by m minus 1 factorial now suppose m equal to 1 then this z0 is known as simple pole so if z0 is a pole of order 1 z0 is called simple pole and in that case residue of f of z at simple pole z0 is nothing but value of function phi at z0 so we will be using this uh, formulas to find out residues at isolated singular point in doing the problem of this cauchy's residue theorem so now we start this problem we are asked to evaluate the integral of the function e raised to z plus z over z cube minus z along contour c where c is this circle represented by absolute value of z equal to pi by 2 taken in positive sense that means we are uh, we have to consider counter clockwise direction so first we write down the given function suppose we did not given function by f of z so we have f of z equal to e raised to z plus z over z cube minus z and this we can rewrite as e raised to z plus z if we take z common we have z square minus 1 that is f of z can be written as e raised to z plus z z times z minus 1 times z plus 1 so this is our function f of z and we can clearly see that 
this f of z has three isolated singular points z equal to 0 1 and minus 1 are isolated singular points of f of z now given contour is circle with radius pi by 2 and center origin given contour is represented by absolute value of z equal to pi by 2 pi by 2 means 3.14 something approximately 3.14 so we can uh, clearly observe that these three singular points are inside this simple close contour c z equal to 0 is inside c because absolute value of 0 is 0 which is less than pi by 2 similarly absolute value of 1 is 1 which is less than pi by 2 and absolute value of minus 1 is 1 which is less than pi by 2 so these three isolated singular points are inside this circle mod z equal to pi by 2 so here we can uh, write that z equal to 0 1 minus 1 lie inside the circle c so and our function f of z is not analytic at these three points only so all these points are inside the simple close contour c and f of z is not analytic at these three points only so that means f of z is analytic at all points inside and on the simple close contour c so that we require for applying cosy's residue theorem so we can write that f of z is analytic at all points inside and on a simple close contour C which is circle with center 0 0 and radius pi by 2 and except for z equal to 0 1 and minus 1 f of z is analytic at all points inside and on a simple close contour c except for a finite number of points which are 0 1 and minus 1 so hypothesis of Cauchy's residue theorem is satisfied therefore integral of f of z along this circle will be equal to 2 pi i times sum of residues of f of z at all these three points so now first we calculate residues of f of z at all these three points so first we find out residue at z equal to 0 now f of z is nothing but first we write f of z in this form e raised to z plus z over z into z minus 1 into z plus 1 e raised to z plus z z times z minus 1 z plus 1 let me check again ok fine it is e raised to z plus z over z into z minus 1 into z plus 1 now this we can rewrite as z minus 0 we keep in the denominator and in the numerator we write e raised to z plus z and here z minus 1 into z plus 1 or we can again rewrite this as e raised to z plus z over z square minus 1 divided by z minus 0 or simply z so therefore f of z equal to phi of z over z minus 0 where 
phi of z is nothing but e raised to z plus z over z square minus 1. So clearly phi of z is analytic at all points except z equal to 1 and minus 1 because this z square minus 1 becomes 0 at z equal to plus or minus 1. So phi of z equal to e raised to z plus z over z square minus 1 is analytic everywhere except z equal to 1 and minus 1. So that means phi of z is analytic at z equal to 0. And we have to check value of phi at z equal to 0. So we put z equal to 0 here. So we have e raised to 0 plus 0 divided by 0 minus 1. e raised to 0 is 1 and we have minus 1 in the denominator. So value of phi at z equal to 0 is minus 1 which is non-zero. So therefore f of z is written in this form phi of z over z minus 0 to the power 1 where phi of z is analytic at z equal to 0 and value of phi at z equal to 0 is non-zero. Therefore, z equal to 0 is a simple pole of f of z. Therefore, f of z has a simple pole at z equal to 0 and residue of f of z at z equal to 0 will be equal to value of function phi at z equal to 0 which is nothing but minus 1 and suppose we denote this residue by say b1 so we have obtained the residue of function f of z at z equal to 0 similarly we find out residues at z equal to 1 and minus 1 so now we find out residue at z equal to 1 so in this case first we have to write our function f of z which is e raised to z plus z over z into z minus 1 z plus 1 now we are interested in the residue at z equal to 1 so we keep this in the denominator and here we write e raised to z plus z over z into z plus 1 so in this case our function phi of z becomes where phi of z equal to this function e raised to z plus z over z into z plus 1. So this function is analytic everywhere except z equal to 0 and z equal to minus 1. So this is analytic at z equal to 1 this is analytic at z equal to 1 and value of this function at z equal to 1 is e raised to 1 plus 1 divided by 1 into 1 plus 1 that is 2 so it is e plus 1 by 2 so this is non-zero so therefore f of z is written as phi of z over z minus 1 raised to 1 where phi of z is analytic at z equal to 1 and value of phi at 1 is non-zero that shows that f of z has a simple pole at z equal to 1 therefore f of z has a simple pole at z equal to 1 and residue of f of z at z equal to 1 is given by value of function phi at 1 which is nothing but e plus 1 by 2. So we denote this residue by say b2. Now we calculate residue of f of z at z equal to minus 1. So in this case uh, we have to consider z plus 1 in the denominator f of z is e raised to z plus z here we have z z minus 1 z plus 1 so now we consider z plus 1 in the denominator and here we write 
e raised to z plus z over z times z minus 1. So therefore f of z becomes phi of z over z into z plus 1 where phi of z is e raised to z plus z over z into z minus 1 and this is not analytic at z equal to 0 and z equal to 1 and it is analytic at z equal to minus 1 which is analytic at z equal to minus 1 and its value at z equal to minus 1 can be obtained by taking z equal to minus 1 here so we put z equal to minus 1 e raised to minus 1 minus 1 divided by minus 1 into minus 1 minus 1 which is minus 2 so this is going to be e raised to minus 1 minus 1 divided by 2 so f of z is written as here i should write z plus 1 only f of z is written as phi of z over z plus 1 where phi of z is analytic at z equal to minus 1 and value of phi at minus 1 is non-zero so therefore f of z has a simple pole at z equal to minus 1 and residue of f of z at z equal to minus 1 will be equal to value of function phi at minus 1 which is nothing but e raised to minus 1 minus 1 divided by 2 and we denote this residue by b3 so we have obtained all the residues so now we can apply Cauchy's residue theorem so by Cauchy's residue theorem integral of f of z over simple close contour c is nothing but 2 pi i times sum of residues of f of z at z equal to 0 1 minus 1 so this is nothing but 2 pi i times uh, we have denoted residues by b1 b2 b3 so b1 plus b2 plus b3 so this is equal to 2 pi i residue at z equal to 0 was minus 1 so residue at z equal to 0 is minus 1 plus b2 value of b2 means residue at z equal to 1 it is e plus 1 by 2 so we substitute all these values here e plus 1 by 2 and plus b3 is e raised to minus 1 minus 1 divided by 2 e raised to minus 1 minus 1 divided by 2 so we simplify this uh, we can take 2 LCM here so we multiply this minus 1 by 2 and here we have e plus 1 plus e raised to minus 1 minus 1 so this 2 will cancel out and we have pi i times e plus e raised to minus 1 and this 1 will cancel out and we have e plus e raised to minus 1 minus 2 so therefore integral of f of z over circle mod z equal to pi by 2 is pi i times e plus we can write 1 by e also minus 2 and because it is closed contour uh, sometimes we use this symbol to show that we are integrating along a closed contour so this is the integral of f of z along simple closed contour which is circle with center 0 0 and radius pi by 2 is given by this pi i into e plus 1 by e minus 2
so this is very easy you just uh, remember the statement of cauchy's residue theorem and you must be able to find out residue of complex function at a given isolated singular point so this is all about this lecture in next lecture we will discuss some more problems on cauchy's residue theorem thank you very much